Right, okay, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel where I'm gonna be testing another tip from a top YouTuber who's uh, given me a massive help in recent weeks and hopefully you. I've been testing these tip videos out and I've found that they've helped me massively in my game. Only small little details, but help me understand how I can play better golf. And today I'm gonna to look at the secret of good ball striking. And trust me, it differs between each of these three clubs. So I've got an iron, I've got a fairway wood, and I've got driver. And that secret, like I said, is different for the three of them. So there's one theme in recent weeks that we've looked at, and that's about ball striking. We did an iron video where we had two pence piece a couple of inches behind the ball that you had to avoid. We had fairway woods where we looked at uh, a tee peg in the ground after the ball again. All ideas about controlling the low point in your swing and looking at the quality of your strike. That low point was key. We've not done anything with drivers yet, and I mentioned in the intro that it differs with each of these three. That was a bit of a lie. It's principle, in principle, it's the same for the irons and the fairway woods, but it does differ for your driver. But the key emphasis is on your ability to control that low point in your swing. It was not something I really concentrated on until in recent weeks, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. Right, okay, so before we get to the full extent of this video and the differences between iron, fairway, and the driver, let's go back and sort of talk about what the first two videos were about, and that's controlling the low point, and a couple of drills as to how you might be able to do that. And I learned a lot from Trackman, which not everybody have the benefits of, but that's the idea of this series. I test the tips. We look and see if we can get some data to back up whether or not they work or not. And in both of these cases, they worked incredibly well. But the idea is, first of all, was understanding what low point was. And uh, within that kind of arc of your swing, and when I hit the mat there, that is the lowest point of my swing. And it's understanding where that is in relation to you hitting the golf ball. And when I started off the videos, or when I started recording data rather, my low point was behind the ball when I was striking irons. And it suggested that, the idea is you want your low point to be in front of the ball. We made a massive change in this video where we did this drill by placing two pence piece behind the ball, looking to make sure two or three inches behind the ball, as you can see from this clip I'm running for you now. The idea was to avoid hitting that two pence piece and what that did effectively was it got you to move that weight forward. It got you to come in a little bit steeper and got, you, got me to shift that low point from two or three inches behind the ball when we started the drill to two or three inches in front of the ball after we'd finished the drill. So that was the first thing. So all it was, two pence piece would go into here. Totally different in terms of the compression on the golf ball. There was a different sound. There was a different ball flight. Real big difference. Right, so next up from Irons, we went into fairway woods and that idea not to top a fairway wood from Matt Fryer was an absolute game changer because it's a nightmare. And like I said in that video, I don't necessarily top woods, but I do generally get them off the bottom grooves quite a few times. And this again, was about moving that low point in the swing and the drill that you're looking at right now was about placing tee pegs on the ground. It was about uh, trying to hit that second tee peg. Once you've hit the ball, hitting that second tee peg out of the ground to ensure again that you moved your low point. And my assumption was, to be honest with you, that we were looking to sweep a fairway wood off the turf, pick it up almost on the upswing. And again, learn something totally different than what we're really looking to do is still get that uh, low point of the swing move to after the ball and the difference it made was significant to my ball striking in terms of my three with a much more piercing ball flight so t's now removed and i'm trying to concentrate on visualizing that t-peg still in the ground to see whether or not i can still get that same sort of effect and that ball just fizzed out there Again, a real game changer in terms of ball striking. If I can take some of this out on the fairways, which is where it matters, then obviously that would be great to see. And that remains to be seen and plenty of practice still required with each of those drills to get that low point switched up. But next up, it was a change and it's into the driver. And why understanding where your low point is in irons, fairways and now driver is the key to strike in all of those clubs better. Right, so this is where the change comes and the real interesting bit for me that we need to take note. And this whole video is about don't look at the ball. Now, don't look at the ball references keeping your focus on another part, um, on another strike location, whatever you want to call it. And to do that in the previous videos, it was a two pence piece on the video we had the T pegs. And in this instance, what Ali shows you is to mark lines in the grass. Now again, I can't do that in here, but what we've used is three pieces of masking tape to sort of um, 
replicate that kind of situation. And to be fair, a few balls with it have all stayed in place. And the idea is simple. This is where our ball is teed up central. This line in the front was a pretty much an idea of where you were trying to encourage you to get through with irons and fairway woods. But then the big difference comes when you've got driver in hand. And what you don't want to be doing is your lowest point of the swing doesn't want to be after the ball when you're using driver. That's the major difference and a big takeaway to make sure you understand. In fact, the idea is to concentrate at this being the lowest point in your swing, two inches behind the ball. And what I've done is literally in, in my normal sort of setup location. So again, driver just in front of that sort of left heel, slight tilt in the shoulders uh, backwards on a more sort of upward angle, I suppose. And then I've stepped away from the ball and my idea has been to try and hit that kind of this back piece here. So I probably got it that time. So there's my focus. And you can just hear me hitting the ball. We're not going to hit the ball. We don't want to hit the floor on the, um, on the actual swing itself, which is that feeling of staying low in that shot. And then this becomes your focus of attention. So again, a little bit higher than I'd want it to be decent enough strike I'll try another one and I've got to say out of all the kind of um, tips that we've gone through so far this is the one I've probably struggled with the most I've got it right I understand that you want to be hitting on sort of an upward swing and you don't want to be swinging on that sort of downward blow D loft in the driver but um, I must admit there have been issues where I'm quite a bit behind the ball, where I seem to be all of a sudden launching the ball considerably higher, very much sitting on the upswing. And again, it would change my sort of the whole dynamics of my swing, I think, with driver. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it has had more sort of variables in it. So it's a case of swinging back. And like I said, not doing that. Don't hit the ball. I'll get another one. The idea was to stop. And just be hitting more on the upswing. So our focus of attention, don't move your head, is all about, or don't look at the ball rather, is don't look at the ball, look at the imaginary line that's behind it, and that's your focus of where you want to be striking the ball. It was a much better strike that one than the first one, to be fair. So it's all about understanding and controlling that low point. Right, okay, so that's me tried and tested on all of these from Iron Fairywood and into the driver. And like I just finished off by saying there, for me, the driver one was the most difficult in a change of the perception and whether or not that kind of visualization of the line behind the ball worked for me or actually moved me a little bit further back than I perhaps wanted to be in terms of my lowest point behind the ball. So with this one, I would say I'd always said I'd assess the tip in terms of how I find it. And to be honest with you, in terms of ball striking, the two lines, whether it be in front or behind the ball, they were okay as a visual, but it certainly helped me a lot more with the two pence piece behind the ball. And when we moved the tee peg in front of the ball in terms of the not topping a fairway wood. So the principle, the matter in terms of don't move your head, uh, or sorry, don't look at the ball. I kind of get that. For me, it's taken away that kind of those visuals not looking at the ball and concentrating on another position, whatever it is, front or behind, that sort of suits your eye and something that works for you. And like I said, the idea then is to take that onto the golf course, which is obviously the difficult bit when you've not got no tape, you've got no tee pegs, you've got no two pence pieces, helping you make that uh, change in your swing. So then it comes all about practicing here at the driving range and taking it onto the golf course. But essentially the tip is the biggest point that I've done in all those three videos is understanding and controlling that low point in your swing. And if you can do that, it doesn't make you a great golfer all of a sudden, but it certainly helps you start striking irons, fairy woods and drivers potentially better than you are doing right now. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. You're enjoying the series so far, it seems. So hit that like button. Give me your comments down below. What have you found? Have any of those videos helped you? And uh, if you've tried any of those tips from the other channels and make sure you go and check them out, then give me that feedback down below and it helps your fellow golfers and maybe sends them in a direction that might point them into another video that helps them play better golf. Right, that's me done. Thanks for watching and I will see you all soon.